Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for more than 10 years. In this video, we're going to talk about ventilation. It would seem the fish live in the water. Why should fish care what happens around? Why is even ventilation needed? Well, today we're going to look at the whether or not a fish farm really needs ventilation. Let's talk about how it works and what kind of ventilation is suitable. Be sure to watch this video all the way to the end, because in addition to figuring out major issues about ventilation, you're going to learn four great tips on how to reduce the cost of your ventilation system by at least 30% and without sacrificing quality. So, why is ventilation needed at all? Let's get to the bottom of this. Ventilation is necessary at a fish farm for two reasons. Firstly, water tends to evaporate and the room becomes humid. Secondly, fish, like any living organism, produces carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is also released into the atmosphere, that is, inside your rest farm building. This moisture, together with carbon dioxide, creates a very corrosive environment for your entire building and equipment. That is, simply located in a humid room with a lot of carbon dioxide, all building structures and res equipment will withstand it not 10, 15, 20 years, but 3, 4 or 5 years, which is several times less than if you provide for a decent quality microclimate inside. Not to mention the fact that carbon dioxide is in principle harmful to humans and must necessarily necessarily be removed from the room, even under regulatory authorities' requirements. How to choose ventilation? There are four basic types of ventilation systems, and now let's talk about each of them. The first system and the simplest one is natural ventilation. And what is natural ventilation? By the way, this is technology used at this farm. The simplest option – open the door, open the windows, air the fish farming block. If the draft is strong, everything is ventilated. Close the windows, close the doors. Basically, everything is like in a normal house or apartment. So, this type of ventilation doesn't cost anything, but it has certain disadvantages. If we're talking about more or less serious industrial form, such ventilation will not be able to properly provide removal of carbon dioxide. It will not be able to remove different gases from the fish farming block. And generally, you are unlikely to be able to set the right air exchange without cooling the room with natural ventilation. Therefore, natural ventilation is a good solution, but an economy option just for small farms. The second type of ventilation is supply or draw-in ventilation. What is it? That is, you have the natural exhaust as well as the natural ventilation, but the inflow is forced. How? Special fans are installed, which blow air into the room. Well, the exhaust air from the room is carried out naturally. This is a more advanced system, which already costs a penny, albeit not much, but it provides better aeration of your room and replacement of the air in the proportions that are necessary. The third similar option is exhaust ventilation. It is essentially the same as supply ventilation, but in reverse. That is, you have natural inflow and forced exhaust. By the way, at small and medium-sized fish farms, I recommend installing this type of ventilation, because natural ventilation is not very convenient in operation, not very reliable. Meanwhile, the supply and exhaust, which I will tell you about now, is quite expensive. So, in general, exhaust ventilation is a good efficient solution for farms up to 500 square meters. The fourth ventilation option is supply and exhaust. Let's put it this way. This is the most advanced ventilation system. When you have forced air flow, what direction it is necessary to, and in the necessary volumes, and the air is also forced out. How does it all happen? As a rule, in a separate room, you install a special air supply and exhaust unit, which just ensures and controls air exchange throughout your building. Also, in addition to these supply and exhaust systems, you can install, for example, fan coils that will heat the air supplied to your building. As far as exhaust is concerned, you can put a heat recovery unit, 
and that is the principle of the supply and exhaust ventilation. But it's more energy consuming, more expensive solution. But first of all, it's more flexible, because with it you can still heat the air, still recover the heat, saving it inside the belly. And also, supply and exhaust ventilation provides the highest quality air exchange. Therefore, for industrial farms, I think it's not just desirable, it is an indispensable solution. That is, at any farm, with the area of approximately 500 square meters, I recommend considering this particular system to reduce humidity and carbon dioxide content in the air. And now let's talk about general requirements to rest farm ventilation. In principle, requirements for ventilation are quite simple. They're based on two basic principles. First, ensure air exchange in the room at least once an hour, or better once every 30 minutes. What does this mean? This means that the entire air volume should be completely replaced in at least one hour, or better each and every 30 minutes. By doing so, you will help remove carbon dioxide and reduce the humidity in your building. And secondly, keep the humidity of the blocks and rooms within 70%. This will help preserve the lifetime of your building and RAS equipment as long as possible. And now let's move on to four tips that will allow you to reduce the cost of your ventilation by at least 30%. And if you're also interested in this kind of economy on a level, be sure to press the like button, because these savings are absolutely real and achievable. So the very first step. Keep the indoor air temperature 1-2 degrees higher than the water temperature. Probably each of you has once been to an open water body in the morning, when it's cool outside, but the water is still warm and there is abundant evaporation. Why does this happen? Because if the water is warmer than the environment, it begins to evaporate profusely. If you can't see it at all from the outside, try keeping water in rest tanks warm when the air temperature is cold, with at least 10 degrees difference and you will get a humid room with condensation accumulated on the walls and the ceiling. That means literally damaging and ruining your building as well as RAS equipment in just a couple of years. The second tip, applicable in case of a small RAS system. If you have a small building, you want to save as much as possible on ventilation, you just provide for natural air ventilation. That is, it's essentially door windows, everything I was talking about. But in addition to that, to reduce humidity, you put a simple split system. Well, essentially the same as the one used in resident apartments. Just taking into consideration the total area of your building. And you switch it on in dehumidification mode. This way, you don't need to provide too frequent air exchange in the farming blocks and rooms. Natural ventilation will cope with the task just perfect. And at the same time, you will have low humidity due to the fact that split system operates in dehumidifying mode. Third, place the air exhaust over the biofilter. Why is this necessary? Basically, the biofilter is where most of the carbon dioxide is generated. Why? Because of babotage that occurs in the biofilter. Air rises up through the water, pushing out all the gases, including carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Thus, all the carbon dioxide ends up in the air. In order to remove it qualitatively with minimum cost, just put a tent, an umbrella over the biofilter and provide for an air exhaust. In this way, all the carbon dioxide will be removed as quickly as possible and you can reduce the air exchange and your fish farm in blocks and rooms. And then there is the fourth tip. It's not only about reducing costs, but also about convenience. I will explain why. Let's imagine there is a farm consisting of tanks only. It doesn't include any equipment. There are only tanks and fish growing in these tanks. Tanks are usually made of plastic. Even if they are made of the concrete, it doesn't matter. And all the equipment is located and concentrated in one area. Essentially, it occupies around 20% of the total building area. If you separate the water treatment units from the main area with the tanks, this way you can provide the highest quality air exchange in the water treatment block, for example, two air exchange per hour. At the same time, in the area occupied by the tanks, which is approximately 70-80% of the entire area, you can reduce the air exchange, thus making your ventilation system much cheaper. And also, apart from other things, all the noisy equipment which is water treatment system is separated. And once you detach water treatment from the fish holding tanks, you get only the noise of water from the tanks. Do you agree, is it nice? By the way, if you also have something to say, if you have any fifth, sixth step, be sure to write them in the comments. And let's save money on ventilation together. And of course a bonus. 
In this file, I've described all the requirements to rest farm ventilation in detail, even what I didn't mention in this video. And you can download it following the link in the description. Read the ventilation requirements and don't make mistakes when planning your fish farming business. It's Anton Pelcher. Press the like button, subscribe to my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it.